Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series, reading the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Without further ado, returning to the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as read by the Lord Naren White. This was the most shocking thing that the slime of the pit seemed to utter cries and voices, that the amorphous dust had gesticulated and sinned, that what was dead and had no shape should usurp the offices of life, and this again, that, the, that that insurgent horror was knit to him closer than a wife, closer than an eye, lay caged in his flesh, where he had heard it mutter and felt it struggle to be born, and at every hour of weakness and in the confidence of slumber prevailed against him and deposed him out of life. The hatred of Hyde for Jekyll was of a different order. His terror of the gallows drove him continually to commit temporary suicide and return to his subordinate station of a part instead of a person. But he loathed the necessity. He loathed the despondency into which Jekyll was now fallen and he resented the dislike with which he was himself regarded. Hence the ape-like tricks that he would play me, scrawling in my own hand blasphemies on the pages of my books, burning the letters and destroying the portrait of my father, and indeed, had it not been for his fear of death, he would long ago have ruined himself in order to involve me in the ruin. But his love of me is wonderful, I go further, I who sicken and freeze at the mere thought of him, when I recall the abjection and passion of this attachment, and when I know how he fears my power to cut him off by suicide, I find it in my heart to pity him. It is useless, and the time awfully fails me. To prolong this description, no one has ever suffered such torments. Let that suffice, and yet even to these have it brought, no, not alleviation, but a certain callousness of soul, a certain acquiescence of despair, and my punishment might have gone on for years, but for the last calamity which has now fallen, and which has finally severed me from my own face and nature, my provision of the salt which had never been renewed since the date of the first experiment, began to run low. I sent out for a fresh supply and mixed the draught. The ebullition followed and the first change of color, not the second. I drank it and it was without efficiency. You will learn from Poole how I have had London ransacked. It was in vain. And now I am, not, and I am now persuaded that my first supply was impure, and that it was the unknown impurity which lent efficacy to the drought. About a week has passed, and I am now finishing this statement under the influence of the last old powder. This, then, is the last time, short of a miracle, that Henry Jekyll can think his own thoughts or see his own face. Now how sadly altered in the glass nor must I delay too long to bring my writing to an end. For if my narrative has hitherto escaped destruction, it has been by a combination of great prudence and great good luck. Should the throes of change take me in the act of writing it, Hyde will tear it in pieces. But if some time shall have elapsed after I have laid it by, his wonderful selfishness and circumscription to the moment will probably save it once from the action of his ape-like spite. And indeed, the doom that is closing on us both has already changed and crushed him. Half an hour from now, when I shall again and forever re that hated personality, I know how I shall sit shuddering and weeping in my chair, or continue with the most strained and fear-struck ecstasy of listening, to pace up and down this room, 
my last earthly refuge, and give ear to every sound of menace? Will Hyde die upon the scaffold, or will he find courage to release himself at the last moment? God knows, I am careless. This is my true hour of death, and what is to follow concerns another than myself. Here then, as I lay down the pen and proceed to seal up my confession, I bring the life of that unhappy Henry Jekyll to an end. That concludes The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson as read by Lord Nairn White, the Holy Ghost, the One True God. I have a lot of thoughts about this story. Um, first and foremost, again, I want to say that it is, it is my great honor to have enshrined another great book, in this case, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson, into the channel of Lord Nairn White, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Amen. As the Nairn Jellical God, it is my privilege to be able to read to you great books of great authors through history. We have read mostly Christian authors. And although Robert Louis Stevenson, if you search online, I believe it says that he is an atheist. He was raised a Christian. And you can tell throughout this book, um, there's a reference here to the word uh, Amen. Uh, there's an idea of the church. There's the idea of hell. These are hellish to see a lot of references of hell. So definitely those are still motifs that are existing in this storytelling and i am very thankful to have enshrined another great book into this you know naranjelical history now of books read by the one true god the naranjelical god lord naran white and when i think now of the strange case of dr jekyll and mr hyde I think of a man who has lost control of himself. I think that's one of the big themes that we're supposed to take away as a reader is that Henry Jekyll, um, Dr. Jekyll, excuse me, was someone in control of his life. And you see by the end here, he discusses the duality of human nature in the last chapter of the story. And... And uh, you see, but by taking this dose of poison over time, I, I view it as him succumbing to the evil that rests within man. And, and again, I, I look at it like Stevenson is showing how a, even a character as successful and hardworking and diligent as Dr. Jekyll. Now, my interpretation is Lord Naren White. That because Dr. Jekyll doesn't walk with God, with Lord Jesus Christ, he gives in to the dark nature of man. And subsequently, by the end of the story here, the passage is unmistakable. Here then, as I lay down the pen and proceed to seal up my confession, I bring the life of that unhappy Henry Jekyll to an end. And it, it says somewhere else up here as well, um, This, then, is the last time, short of a miracle, that Henry Jekyll can think his own thoughts or see his own face, now how sadly altered in the glass. So it shows this degradation of the character of Dr. Jekyll into becoming Mr. Hyde, a violent and you know, physical-based being that has sacrificed his humanity, and in my estimation is because he did not walk with God. And so, as we are now done the story, I'll go ahead and bring this series to an end here. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care and thanks again.